FSD 14 is launching next week. That is at least according to what Elon Musk said today on September 25th, 2025. We have a lot to look forward to with version 14, but as of right now, there are no leaked release notes. Unlike previously where you'd always see a screenshot or two, maybe an employee had shared it. We haven't seen anything like that for version 14. The employees in fact have a coming soon message in the release notes to prevent that leak from occurring. So this is very, very unique. Now, Elon Musk did mention that this is going to be a lot safer than human drivers, but will it be unsupervised? No, the answer to that is no. We still need to pay attention. Now, there was a very, very challenging edge case that bearded Tesla encountered Justin along with Josh West on a cross country full self driving challenge to see if they could have the car drive from California all the way to Florida. And literally within the first day or two, I'm not sure exactly when this happened, but it was pretty early on in their trip. They encountered a big metal object in the road. Well, we got a uh, something in the road. Here. Yeah, we sure do. All oh, right, it's sure. like road kill. No, it's not. Oh, uh -oh. that is not roadkill. Um, oh my God. Um, um, are you okay? Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. And they didn't know if they should try to avoid it. Now they were in their minds thinking, we want to keep FSD engaged. But to be honest with you, it's very, very rare that there is a huge metal object in the middle of the road that can cause that type of damage. He did have to get a completely new battery. Now that is certainly an edge case, but you have to think of all the other edge cases. So the question is in the future, will FSD 14, for example, avoid huge metal objects in the middle of the road? Well, if you think about it, if the car makes an evasive maneuver to dramatically move out of the way of a object, a potential object in the road when it could be a plastic bag, and let's say someone is in the other lane, you are going to cause a lot of havoc. It's gonna be complete chaos. Not to mention, it could be actually a shadow. It could be some black asphalt kind of patching a section of the road. It could be any number of things, even a puddle in the middle of the road. That happens where sometimes even now the car will go out of the way to avoid puddles. And I love that. But when you're traveling 70 miles an hour and you see a dark object in the middle of the road when everything else is completely clear and there are no issues whatsoever, what would the car do? What would you do as a human? You may see a dark object and think, oh yeah, I'll just go right, right in the middle of that. How many times have you encountered roadkill where it's like right in the middle of the road and you encounter it the last second and you're traveling fast enough where you're like, eh, I'll just go straight over it. You know that it's not gonna harm your car. So this is a judgment call that humans have to make in a split second. Will AI be equivalent to a human in those situations? That is very, very hard to determine. And there are always going to be edge cases to solve for. And no matter what happens, it's never going to be perfect. Now, I hate to admit that, but that is the reality of this whole scenario. Now, here's the, the funny thing. A friend of mine posted on LinkedIn recently. Uh, he did a challenge. He asked several different uh, AI agents. He asked if it could draw a picture of an electrical circuit with a light bulb, for example. He asked if it could show a 120 volt outlet and how you would wire that into the wall. And he got drastically different results, but they were all horrible. They were saying, connect the ground to the line, and it was just absurd, some of the results. And if you actually followed the advice, you would end up in a lot of trouble. Now, for a novice, for somebody that doesn't know anything about electricity, they could go and blindly trust that and then find out that there's a disaster waiting to happen. This is the reality of AI today. Nobody really fully trusts it and no one fully relies on it. However, in the future, that's where things get really scary. Once it gets really, really good, where it's 95% there, or 98% there, people are gonna be a lot more trusting of it. And then these small mistakes, they're gonna really literally happen. Nobody's gonna second guess it. Now, 5% mistakes, are we okay with that? 
Well, we have to ask ourselves, how often do humans make those mistakes without AI? Is it 5% or is it more than 5%? And that's the real question. That is the holy grail that we need to solve for is how do you prove that full self-driving or AI in general is better than humans as a collective? There are certain areas where it shines really, really well, but then we all know these edge cases where it just completely fails. And sometimes it's actually really funny how badly it fails. So this is kind of the future that we have to look forward to. AI is not completely predictable. Humans aren't pro hard coding it. A lot of people are saying they want certain improvements. They want to see certain improvements with version 14. But a lot of them come down to getting back to a heuristics approach. You program it to do this. You program it to do that. Right now, when all these models are being trained, the results are always reviewed by a human. And this is the way AI is approached today. And it's very, very important that you have that check by a human to make sure that, and of course, you're not checking every single output. You're just randomly sampling certain outputs and then you're reviewing it to make sure that it's accurate and then if it's not accurate you send it back for training you perhaps create a bias in the training data to prevent it from making those mistakes again in the future and then you continue to iterate from there so it's very fascinating to me how ai is coming together to make these things happen but it still relies on humans long story short nobody knows exactly when it will be perfect or perfect enough to be acceptable by the general public and that is what is very very difficult i think for ceos like elon musk you have to imagine the immense challenge that's in front of Tesla to be able to solve this. And how do you get people's confidence? Well, you have to say these things. Elon Musk is no stranger to saying grandiose statements that end up not being true. One could say that he overpromises and under delivers, but if you look at the long term, eventually he does deliver. And the team is dedicated to this, and it's been at the forefront of Tesla's mission statement forever to be able to solve full self driving. And Elon has mentioned that, hey, if it's not possible with Hardware 3, we'll do a free hardware swap. So really, we get to look forward to this. A lot of Hardware 3 owners are very pessimistic. They're losing hope, and some of them have completely given up. We can't take that approach, in my opinion. We need to be optimistic. We need to look forward to a, a bright future, and we need to trust that Tesla will take care of us. Now, some people that are much longer Tesla owners than I am, they kind of cringe at that statement. But I honestly, truly believe that Tesla is trying their very best to make this happen for everybody, including Hardware 3 owners. So at the end of the day, what do we need to do? Well, we just need to be very patient, continue to be patient. I will continue to ask Ashok and the team, Elon and others at Tesla, what is the status for Hardware 3? What progress can we look forward to? What timelines are they setting forth for us? because we were the ones that kind of jump-started this whole thing. We were the early adopters. We were kind of the crowd funders that made FSD possible in the early days. So Tesla really can't forget about us, but they have a bad habit of blindly blocking older platforms and focusing on the future. And that, my friends, is corporate America. That is a corporation being a corporation. They have to focus on the future and not the past. So if you feel like you're stuck in time, if you feel like your car is becoming obsolete every single day, every single month, then yeah, you have, you have a right to be frustrated. You have a right to be agitated over that. But I also at the same time ask that everybody that's kind of losing hope with Hardware 3, remember that your car is way better than any other car out there right now. And also people in Europe don't even have it right now. So be thankful for what you have, at least today and get a lot of use out of it. I'm using it all the time and it operates so, so well. You get used to where it falls down and then you're able to take over very quickly in those situations. Now, turning the page, there is a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt spread about full self-driving. And this is particularly coming from one individual who tells a very biased story. And it's very, very frustrating to see his narrative play out in the media, including a Forbes article that was recently published saying how horrible some of the technology is, how it runs right past 
school buses, how it doesn't slow down for things. It'll go to, down one-way streets the wrong way. It will try to go through blocked roads. There are situations, and these are edge cases that we can't completely dismiss, where this is a legitimate concern. However, we can't focus on the negatives. If everybody focused on the negatives, we wouldn't get anywhere. So spread positivity, spread hope, spread happiness. I sound like a hippie right now, <laughs> but really honestly, post those videos where it does st stuff really, really well. And when you get version 14, if you're watching this and you have AI4, post a video about it. Let's be excited for this progress rather than being negative, focus on the future. That's where Tesla's looking and that's where we should also look and that's where we will be in the future. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any thoughts, opinions, comments, leave them down below. It's been a day since I filmed that and I reflected a little bit and I don't think we should just sit back and smile and wait for a bright future and cross our fingers and really just be you know all all happy and rosy about what's happening with hardware 3. The question is how long do we need to wait? What is that patience level? Full self driving is not cheap. So people have a right to be angry and I definitely can relate. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. See you guys.